A hate crime is being turned into a work of art in San Francisco. Two years ago, a man vandalized books about gays at the San Francisco Public Library. But instead of throwing the books away, they're coming back to teach a lesson in tolerance. NBC 11's Angie Crouch is live at the library with a look at this unique project. Angie? It is unique. This project is called Reversing Vandalism, and it's an opportunity for artists to turn a hate crime into something positive. Tonight, they're sifting through hundreds of vandalized books at the San Francisco Public Library. They're hoping to turn these damaged books into pieces of art. More than 600 books were found slashed and hidden throughout the library in 2001. Most of them had gay themes, but some were destroyed simply because the author's name was gay. Even a book about the World War II plane Enola Gay was vandalized. The man who did all of this was convicted of a hate crime and is banned from all libraries. But staff here was devastated by the destruction of so many books. What a shame. We can't imagine tossing them out. That would basically be completing the crime. So they came up with an idea to ask the public to turn the slashed and torn books into pieces of art that will be displayed throughout the library as a lesson in tolerance. Artist Jack Davis sees the project as an opportunity to provide healing. Fortunately, you know, these are objects and not people that were slashed. But, you know, it is, it is sort of representational of what happens to people on a daily basis, you know, in the streets. This is something we can do about it to show that we are a strong community and that we do, we do have the possibility of healing ourselves and making things beautiful. Now, so far, the San Francisco Public Library has received more than 100 submissions from people all around the country who want a chance to turn a damaged book into a piece of artwork. And you don't have to be an artist to take part. If you'd like to find out more about this project, you can go to our website at NBC11.com and look for the Reversing Vandalism link. We're live in San Francisco. I'm Angie Crouch, NBC11 News. In 2001, over 600 books relating to topics on gays, lesbians, women, and HIV AIDS were discovered, mutilated, and stuffed under the shelves of the San Francisco Main Library. Now, instead of simply discarding the books, the library called upon artists to transform the damaged books into works of art. Now that artwork is being showcased in an exhibit called Reversing Vandalism. With me this morning is Jim Van Buskirk. He is the program manager of the library's James C. Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center. And with him is one of the artists, Mary Marsh. She was called upon to help um, do something with these vandalized books. And I welcome both of you here to Bay Area People this morning. morning. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Jim, very quickly. I mean, this was a couple of, what, three years ago. Mm -hmm. and and what happened to these books and why? Well, we never figured out exactly how the perpetrator went about it, but when we got the books back from the police, we were faced with boxes and boxes of 600 books that had been deeply carved, gouged, torn. So this sounds like somebody actually came into the library into and battled, the library. didn't take them out, didn't no. check them out, didn't check with them back With sharp in. objects and a lot of anger and carved them up right under our noses. Wow, and it took some time to find them. It took a, they were found over a series of months and we couldn't figure out oh. how it was being done, when it was being done, when it, whether it was still being done. And was it just one person? Or? As far as we know, it was just one person. And I understand that person had been caught? Yes. Okay, now, most people would say, well, you know, it's, it's a shame, we lost these books and out they go. Right. Why did you decide to try and do something with them? Um, when they were returned from the police, we decided that we would take uh, digital photographs of them so that we knew what we would be throwing away. Mm -hmm. And the more we worked with them, the more I could feel that the energy was so negative and so filled with hate. And I thought, we have to do one more thing to reverse this energy, otherwise the perpetrator will have su successfully completed his goal. And so I started to talk to artist friends, including Mary, and mm -hmm. saying, what are we going to do? Do you have any ideas? Mm -hmm. And Mary who, and I have been friends for years, and I think she's a wonderful artist, and she said, well, I make art out of books. And so, Mary? I think we both came well. up with the idea, and I thought it was really important to do something with them. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that um, a lot of artists, like me, like to have um, something to transform. Right. It's a good challenge. Yeah, good challenge. yeah, we like the intellectual challenge, mm -hmm. and um, that's what artists do, transform things. And when Jim talked about transforming the energy, 
I thought that was a really, really good idea. Now, we were saying that you found 600 books. Not all of the books, I would assume, would be suitable for artwork. Well, they were all sent out. Well, it started very small. Originally, I envisioned this as a small uh, exhibit in the Hormel Center at the San Francisco Public Library. And I talked to Mary and some of my other friends, and they helped spread the word. Um, but soon, we realized that this was a bigger project. And so I started working with our exhibitions program. And we sent out a call to artists. And the artists themselves, uh, through word of mouth, made people aware of it. So we got responses from all over the so country. Uh, roughly how many artists participated then? Um, about 200 artists finally participated. Wow, that's a big number. Right. We had about 600 volumes that had been mutilated. Some of those were sent out and didn't, didn't come back. Well, you brought a little videotape. And, and just to give people a sample of what the transformation looked like. So um, this is a little bit of the exhibit here. And so, which literally looking at books that were transformed somehow mm -hmm. into pieces of art, and you can see that the variety. I mean, it's just right. it's a big variety of, of solutions. How many books are actually on display? About two hundred, and some of the books are completely unrecognizable from their original destroyed. Mm -hmm. You both kindly brought one in. I brought two in, and Jim, you have one here. Let's get to this first one here. Right. This one is called Fasten Aiding. It's a play on words. And the reason I brought this is because this is a book that I co-authored with Susan Stryker that came out in 1996 when the Hormel Center came into existence at the new San Francisco Public mm -hmm. Library. And I think the, the viewers might be able to see that there are some, some cuts into the right, book. Right, it's so heavily is, slashed right. uh, through here. And then what the artist has done is bolted with thick metal bolts mm -hmm. through. So the, the book is no longer a book, it can't be opened or read, it's right. now an object, so it sort of reminds me of Frankenstein being put together with um, these bolts, and so it's sort of repaired in a <laughs> way, but mm -hmm. in a but strange really. way. Okay. Yes. And Mary, this is yours, this is a book here, and I'm going to just show the outside. Yeah, that's the this original out. cover. Right, this the... is the original cover. And so somebody took a very sharp knife, it looks like, to this book, and let me open it up. This is your art piece. You made it into yeah. What? I wanted to I wanted to utilize the the holes that were made. And you see the holes in the, here in exactly. all the pages. This is a heavily kind of illustrated here. book, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to turn the holes around from being being damaged into something positive. So I I, I took the book apart basically kind of turned it inside out mm -hmm. and put it back together so that the holes could be used to uh, as little peepholes. You could look through them mm -hmm. to and, and other the holes pages. are almost kind of, yeah, and they're very prominent when you're looking at this because you can see them kind of going around into the book. And as simple as the scenes, I mean, it's something I would never have thought of. Mm -hmm. That's why you're the artist and I'm not. <laughs> but, but this is just a, a small example of some of these. How many books did you transform? Um, I just did. I just did one book. Okay, so we have this one here. And I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't decide, you know, first of all, I had to select the book from these many boxes of books. Mm -hmm. It was kind of overwhelming. Um, and then I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, I wanted to transform it without changing it. Exactly. And obviously this can fold up like a book, but when you open it, it becomes a different kind of, uh, it has a different dimension to mm -hmm. it. Well, you know, we're almost out of time, but... We want to tell people that later on this afternoon, you're holding a, a lecture program. Right, it's a panel, panel on which, discussion mm -hmm. about altered books. Mm -hmm. And it's at uh, the library this at, afternoon from right. 1 to 2.30 p.m. In the Corret okay. Auditorium. And, and there is, um, some of these books have been, are on exhibit elsewhere, too. You said one, there's an exhibit in other states. Yeah, in Santa Fe in June of uh, this year, oh. there will be a parallel exhibit. Excellent. So not the same books, but some of the same artists. And, and uh, you still share the story. Right. Jim, thank you very much for being here. Mary, thank you, and thank, thank you for you. bringing your artwork. All right, so go on down, check it out. The exhibit will be on for another, what, several weeks? Uh, through May 2nd. Through May 2nd. All right, thank you. And up next on Bay Area People, an issue that's a hot button for many communities is trees. Should they be removed um, in the name of public safety? We'll find out when Bay Area People returns. Stay with us. <laughs>